those I haven't had the pleasure to meet, I'm Amy Myers, I'm the director of the Yale Center for British Art, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Landscape Now, the third in an ongoing series of symposia sponsored by three study centers focused on the history of British art. The Paul Millen Center for Studies of British Art here in London, um, the Yale Center for British Art, of course, at in New Haven, and the Huntington Library Art Collections and Botanical Gardens in San Marino, California. <coughs> We have had a long, rich, and wonderful collaboration across all three institutions that have brought all of us together, I know, in various configurations over the years, examining many important topics for the field. Um, but about four years ago, we came together thinking that it might be nice to organize an annual symposium focused on a topic of particular importance to the field at any one point in time, over time, because we hope that this series will um, be able to go on long into the future, allow us all to examine those particular topic areas that we think have um, special significance to our study um, at, um, at whatever moment it is that we find ourselves um, examining the nature of British culture in a global context. Um, this symposium follows on the first at the Huntington, which uh, looked at the issue of portraiture. The second at the Yale Center for British Art, which examined photography. These are very broad, large topics. Space. We haven't yet determined the topic, but we'll soon. Um, and it will bring us back to the Huntington again. Um, and then again, of course, at the Yale Center and then back here to central London. So we hope that we will find ourselves all together um, examining a variety of topics over time in these various sites um, uh, really across the globe. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our colleague, and Melinda McCurdy from the Huntington, who will speak for Steve Hindle, the acting president, and her colleagues there. Thank you. I, um, for those of you who had early drafts of the conference program, Steve Hindle, our director of research at the Huntington, was originally planning to be here, and he's very sorry he couldn't make it at the last minute. He's wearing two hats at the moment and just got a little bit too busy. So I am here in his stead, and I'm very pleased and privileged to be here um, working with Amy and Mark and everyone at the Paul Mellon Center who has been so fabulous to work with on this. And I just wanted to say really briefly that I'm really looking forward to hearing the speakers over the next two days and um, hope to see all of you next year in the, at the Huntington in California where um, I can guarantee you some lovely, fabulous weather and um, <laughs> some sunshine. And, but it's a lovely day today, so I'm very happy to be here on this occasion. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Mark because he's got a lot more to say. I sort of am filling in at the last minute. but. Um, Thank you very much, and I'm um, looking forward to speaking with all of you over the course of the next two days. Great. Yes, well, welcome, everyone. Like Amy and Melinda, I'd love to welcome you to the next two days' worth of conversation and talks. Really, really looking forward to it. So, as Amy's just said, this is the third of a series of annual conferences that we've been developing in collaboration with the with the Huntington, our friends there, and our colleagues at the Yale Center. And in devising these events, again, repeating really what Amy's just been talking about, we've sought to choose topics that are not only capacious and significant, big areas, but that does, again, Amy said, feel timely, at least to us uh, in devising these events, and at least to us, if only on a gut level. And that is, there seem to be topics to us that address an issue or a genre or a medium that we can see attracting new or renewed scholarly interest of an ambitious and imaginative sort. And for our first two conferences, uh, as, uh, as Amy mentioned, we looked at uh, portraiture, or rather the interactive capacities of portraiture, and the relationship between photography and notions of Britishness. And this year, of course, We've chosen the subjects and genre of landscape imagery, feeling that this, too, is an area that is not only ripe for reassessment, but already attracting new kinds of attention. We just wanted to surf this wave, even if that wave is only just building. So, as we noted in our call for papers, the pictorial representation of the British landscape was the subject of sustained 
really important scholarly attention in the 1980s and the 1990s. This was a period, and let's call it landscape then, that saw the emergence both of a social history of art as a really vital methodological mode and of an exceptionally brilliant generation of scholars from a range of disciplinary backgrounds who focused on the landscape imagery of the Georgian period in particular. It was interesting that it was that kind of imagery that drew so much attention in that period. Writers such as John Barrell and Anne Birmingham, who produced powerful and provocative thematic studies on the subject, together with writers such as David Salkin and Michael Rosenthal, who wrote seminal texts on individual landscape artists, not only helped transform interpretations of British landscape painting, but made the study of such imagery seem essential to a proper understanding of British art itself. And even as the attention of historians of British art has shifted somewhat, or expanded somewhat over the last two decades, to the study of, amongst other things, empire, print culture, exhibitions, the iconography of urban life, and the imagery of the Victorian and modern period, the study of the landscape in adjacent disciplines has continued apace, driven in part by, increasingly driven in part by, political and environmental imperatives. Cultural geographers such as Stephen Daniels and David Matlas have long been offering nuanced investigations of the British landscape in their work, asking us to think afresh about its relationships to national identity or memory and post-imperial decline. In recent years, furthermore, newly energised categories of nature writing and cultural histories that deal engagingly with the British landscape have gained widespread currency beyond the purely academic arena. And while many scholars in the humanities in an age of globalisation and deepening ecological concern have felt compelled to think about landscape on a vastly expanded basis, others, including writers from that first wave of scholarship in the 1980s and 90s, have been driven to offer a new and suggestive focus on the local. I couldn't resist showing you John Barrell's work and fascinating study on that obscure, maybe still slightly obscure, Welsh artist Edward Pugh of Ruthyn that really took seriously that notion of a local perspective. The moment thus seems ripe for a major re art historical reassessment of the imagery of the British landscape, one that takes account of these and other emergent concerns, one that draws on the insights offered by colleagues from a range of other strands in the humanities, and one that looks across periods and media so that it might just as happily interrogate recent work in film as it might the details of a medieval manuscript. We see this conference and the rich array of papers that uh, we've managed to gather together for this event as kicking off this process of reassessment and as an event that forms part of a wider push on our collective part to promote new scholarship in this area. Thus, following the publication of our online catalogues on the landscape artists Richard Wilson and Francis Town, we at the PMC have recently commissioned Greg Smith to produce, who, who of course you'll remember did the great Girton exhibition at Tate, Tate Britain, to produce an online catalogue of Girton's works. Meanwhile, working with a wide range of constable specialists and with experts such as those who work on 19th century correspondence, we're thinking afresh about how we might make the artist's astonishing letters even more widely available to a contemporary audience and how he might use his correspondence to help us look anew at his works and career. Furthermore, we're delighted that Tim Barringer, who will be giving our keynote on, uh, tomorrow morning, is also going to be giving the Paul Mellon lectures, uh, a keynote tomorrow dealing with Thomas Cole, who one of whose works you see in front of you, is also going to be giving the Paul Mellon lectures in London and at Yale in the spring of 2019 on the topic of global landscape. So tomorrow's talk will, I'm sure, provide a really juicy trailer for that series of lectures, something to look forward to uh, in, in 19. So these ventures are only some of the elements of what we envisage as a far broader discussion and analysis for landscape imagery at the PMC and at the Yale Centre, no doubt at the Huntington too, over the next few years. One that we hope will find expression in a variety of outputs and publications, including our very own journal, of course, published together with uh, our colleagues at Yale, uh, British Art Studies. The seventh issue, which I have to tell you is going to be out uh, sometime over the next day or two, so watch that space. 
I don't think there's much landscape in that, this next issue, but that's, that's exactly the point. We're going to have lots of it in the future. <laughs> so the next, few days mark, or the next two days mark not so much the culmination of a huge amount of effort on the part of those who've helped us put together this event. I'd really want to say a special thanks on that, in that respect to, uh, to uh, Melinda, to Amy, to, to Sarah Turner, to Martina Droth, all of whom were involved in the whole process of putting together uh, uh, all the papers and, and, and the thinking about this, uh, this event. But also a huge thank you to Ella Fleming, who helped organize all the, uh, the arrangements together, working with Harriet Fisher uh, from the Paul Mellon Center. Huge thanks to them. So this is not only a culmination of all of that effort, but we see the conference as the beginning of what we hope will be an exciting and highly collaborative scholarly project that will run over a number of years and to which we'd like all of you to contribute. So can I ask you not only to enjoy our rich mis mixture of papers, but please to join in the discussion after these papers, to provoke, to question, and to offer us your own perspectives on what you've been hearing. And then I think we really will have the chance to create something that we might call Landscape Now, even as we look back very fondly and with a great deal of respect to Landscape Then. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>